Go ahead, brother. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, in earth, in earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. Give us this day, give us this day, our daily bread, our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not, and lead us not into temptation, into temptation, but deliver us, but deliver us. From evil, from evil, for thine is the kingdom, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the power, and the glory, and the glory, forever, forever. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading is coming from Psalms 119, beginning at verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled. Blessed are the undefiled. In the way. In the way. Who walk in the law. Who walk in the law. Of the Lord. Of the Lord. Blessed are they, blessed are they, that keep his testimonies, that keep his testimonies, and that seek him, and that seek him, with the whole heart, with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways, they walk in his ways. Once again, that was Psalms 119, verses 1 through 3. Most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father, we come for you humbly, Father, seeking wisdom and seeking understanding, Father. Father, please give us a humble and a meek spirit, Father, so that we can be receptive of today's message, Father. Please remove that stiff neckedness and that hard headed energy from all of us, Father, because we all have things that we have to work on. Mm. And if we don't, Father, we will meet our fate and we deserve it. Yeah. So, Father, please give us a humble and meek spirit, Father, so that we can submit to you because you have likened the church unto your wife. Mm. So, please give us that humble and submissive spirit, Father, so that we can please you. And we say this prayer to you. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Peace to y'all. Good to be back. <clears throat> Good to be alive and breathing. Let's see. Uh, all right. No new faces. Everybody here understands how I will convey the message. Everybody understands. But Sabbath disclaimer, even though part of the lesson is a Sabbath disclaimer. Um. Not that I'm being lazy, because I did this lesson last week, but the feast days are coming in about, uh, what, a week and some change? Two weeks, yeah, two weeks and some, about, about mm, 12 days, something like that. So I like doing this lesson before the feast days. I don't like doing a lesson inside the feast days. Mm -hmm. So I figured, all right, I'll do that. And I very rarely do back-to-backs, like very rare, like, I seriously don't, but this is what we got. All right, now that being said, this lesson has a Sabbath disclaimer in it, but it doesn't have this Sabbath disclaimer in it. I'm telling y'all right now, this is interactive, pull out your Bibles, punch me in the face. I'm telling y'all right now, the Sabbath is only 12 hours. It's only from six to six or seven to seven, depending on what time Narcos comes on and how long I want to binge watch it. Prove me wrong. Out of the Bible, go. Genesis 1-5. And then I got you after that, Rich. I don't care what nobody say. Ain't that a black statement? <laughs> I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> I'm going to do this until I either die or the Lord comes back. And you said verse fever. That's verse 5. Genesis 1. And this is to disprove the fallacy that the Sabbath is only during the daylight hours. This will disprove that. And this is literally, when you open the Bible up, this is what kills me. This is the first thing you're going to be reading. What constitutes a day? Brother Dre, what constitutes a day? <clears throat> and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the, and the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning was the first day. Uh, since we're dancing, skip down to verse 8. And read that, please. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. I mean, did we read that the, the morning and the morning is the day? Mm -hmm. Or did we read that the evening and the morning evening is the day? Morning. Skip down to verse 13, brother. Verse 13, please. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Reggie, what you got? Again. What you got? I'm going to shut it down. Come on. <laughs> Let's do it. Baseball bats. No right. We ain't got to do this no more. 
we ain't got okay. to do this no more. John 1, 39 as an example. John 1? Yeah, just, yeah. I think I need an overhead projector for this. Okay. John 1. John 139. 139? Everybody relax. All right. Don't, don't get hyped. All right. Ah. John 1, verse 39. All right. Go ahead, my brother. Well, hold on. Russell Simmons. All right. John 1, St. John 1, verse 39. Go ahead, brother. He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, that's just one example. There's another scripture in the Bible that says, you know, the particular hour. Uh huh. Okay, so uh, if I, the first hour is like, say, for example, all right, come on, man. Come on up here and, and let us know. This he came, came strapped This came today. upon me last night. This came upon he, me last he came, night. He came strapped. He knew I was going to do the disclaimer, didn't he? Yeah. I will tell no, the no, people this, man. I saw that scripture. I said, 10th hour. Hmm, what time is that during, you know? Okay, look. The, four to five. The first hour is from dawn to 8 a.m. Yes, mm -hmm. and the 10th hour is between four and five. Yeah. And the 11th hour. Okay, check this out. Five to six. Yeah, and so if the first hour... If the first hour is from eight from dawn to eight a.m. and the twelfth hour is six p.m. to sundown, mm -hmm. where are the other twelve hours? Mm -hmm. that, that's there not, you not, go. That's not a day. That's a, that's a half a day. There you go. Mm -hmm. It's twenty-four hours in a day. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. Like military get, time. Let's give him a round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you, brother. You don't need no more disclaimers. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> Sexy chocolate. That's true. <laughs> What you got, Ross? <laughs> Drop the mic, then I got you, Hinga. See, this is a class right here. Go ahead, Ross, what you got? She said, what now? Nehemiah 13 said, we ain't got to do this no more. That's right, and, and honor Reggie's mama, we ain't got to do this no more. <laughs> I'm about to shut it down. I love it. Nehemiah 13, but of course. Nehemiah 13, and this is again to disprove that a day is only during the daylight hours. Nehemiah 13, you said verse 15. Come on, brother. <clears throat> in those days saw I in Judah some training wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheaves and lighting asses, as also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. Come on. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish and all manner of ware, and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Stop. Can I, can I buy or sell on the Sabbath? No. no. And how will I know that? Keep reading. <laughs> Go ahead. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah. What does contended mean? Basically go back and forth. Like yep, argue. argue. Yep. Yeah, argue. Yeah. So he's arguing with them about, go ahead, sir. And said unto them, what evil, what evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? What evil thing were they doing? Buying Didn't, or selling. Buying or selling. Making commerce, doing transactions. We don't do that on the Sabbath day. Go ahead, kind sir. Did not your fathers thus and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? Yet you bring more wrath upon Israel by befriending the Sabbath. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath. Began to be light before the Sabbath? Began to be dark before the Sabbath. Because see, it's dawn to dawn, so this, it would have to be beating light before the Sabbath. That's what that, that's what that says, right? Uh -uh. It says what? Began to be dark before the Sabbath. So that should let us know that evening, night is when the Sabbath begins, because it's beginning to be dark. Go ahead, kind sir. And I commanded that the gates should be shut. And charged that they should not be open till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants said, I at the gates, that there should not no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. I like it. I like it. Hanger, what you got, man? We're going to hit Judges 19. Judges? I love it. I love it. That's right. On my watch, y'all going to be punching. Y'all going to be like, yeah. okay, wait a minute, though. Right. Yeah. We ain't got to do this no more. 
No mo. Not no more. No mo. M O with the <laughs> Judges 19. Go ahead, brother. And it came to pass on the fourth day. On what day? On the fourth day. Go ahead, sir. When they arose early in the morning, that he rose up to depart. And the damsel's father said unto his son-in-law, Comfort thine heart with a morsel of bread, and afterward go your way. And he sat down and did eat and drink both of them together. For the damsel's father had said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night. Tarry and when? Tarry all night. Come on, so we got the day. We know it's the fourth day. We know we're going into the night. Go ahead, kind sir. And let thine heart be merry. And when the man rose up to the part, his father-in-law urged him, therefore he lies there again. Come on. And he arose early in the morning on the fifth day to the part. And the damsel's father said, Comfort thine heart, I pray thee. And he tarried until afternoon, and they did eat both of them. So we got evening, we got morning, we got afternoon. That is how a day goes. Go ahead, kind sir. And when the man rose up to the part, he and his concubine and his servant and his father-in-law, the damsel's father said unto him, Behold, now the day draws towards evening. So now we're coming to the end of the fifth day into the sixth day. Again, evening, morning, afternoon, evening. That's how it goes. Go ahead, kind sir. I pray you tarry all night. Behold, the day groweth to an end. Lie cheer, that thine heart may be merry. And tomorrow I'll get you early on your way, that thou mayest go home. I love it. Anybody got something? Martin, go ahead. Let's go. Reggie. <laughs> we ain't got to do it no more. John 11, verse 9. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to let red letters. Red letters. Don't cut it. John 11, verse 9. John 11, verse 9. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, sir. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? Uh -oh. If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. All right. Now, the reason why I brought that scripture up is because a lot of Hebrews that's on doctrine, yep. they use that to say uh -huh. what he just asked. Mm -hmm. They want to that's stand on that. Use. Yep. That's the game they use. Well, since we brought that out... <laughs> Let's go to uh, Exodus 12 real quick. This is what I would do to them. See, brother, it says Exodus 12. And then I got some, I got some stuff on my private stock. Y'all get ready to be some private dances, dances for money. Let's go. But let's go to Exodus 12 real quick. See, brother, it says, are there not but 12 hours in a day, brother? Okay, let's see this then. Exodus 12, <laughs> that part. And how many for the whole entire day? Because if we're talking daylight hours, sure, no problem. But then again, we got to consider in the vernal equinox and the position of the sun then because it's 13 hours in a day sometimes, depending on the time of year. So what we want to do, brother? <laughs> Exodus 12, nuances, man, nuances. Y'all trying to make me break it out early, man. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm like... Kind of save it. <laughs> Let it marinate. Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah, yeah, try to hold marinate. it in real. I'm not. <laughs> lead up to it. Hold on. Yeah, let's yeah. lead up to it. That, man. that first, that first. Goodness gracious. Like, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, man, y'all tripping. <laughs> Exodus 12, verse 40. Go ahead, kind sir. <clears throat> now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Now this is the book of Moses, though. Let's be clear. Mm -hmm. And this book was dictated to Moses by whom? Moses. And that would be Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. All right, just making sure Jesus Christ wrote this, gave it to Moses, so he wrote it, and then we can all read it. Go ahead, kind sir. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self-same day. Self-same what now? Self-same day. Just making sure. Go ahead, sir. It came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord. Now, I'm confused. Is it a day or is it a night? <laughs> Because it just said itself same day, and then it just said it's a night to be remembered. Right. Let's keep reading and see if it clears itself up. Go ahead, sir. For bringing them out, of, for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. Come on. This is that night of the Lord. This is the what now? This is that night of the Lord. I thought it was a self same day. 
night of the Lord. Okay, so it's a day and it's a night and an evening and a morning is a, oh, got it, evening and a morning is a day. Go ahead, kind sir. To be observed of all the children of Israel and their generations. Skip, do me a favor, skip down to verse 51 just so we can make sure that we're not tripping if we're tripping. Go ahead, sir. And it came to pass the self same day. Self same what now? Self same day. Just making sure. That the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. And it was a night to be much remembered. Mm -hmm. All right, now, <clears throat> let's see if we can really, uh, let's do this. Let's go to John 12 real quick. No, John 13 real quick. I mean, if we're going to break it out, we can break it out. Now, one of those people, to your point, Martin, if somebody hit that to me, then I hit them with the Exodus, and they were still kind of like, uh, you know, I don't know, brother. I would go to John 13, and then I would, I would dance them through a day. I would dance them through a whole 24-hour period, and then make them explain to me how we only talking about during the daylight hours. John 13, let's start reading at verse... One, John 13, verse one. Go ahead, kind sir. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should, be, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot. Now, you know what? Now, let's go to Matthew. Okay. Let's go to Matthew. I'm going to use the Matthew one. Matthew, hold on real quick. See, brother. <laughs> Hold on, real quick. Yeah, Matthew 26. This is the one you want to use, Matthew 26. Yes, yeah, sir. Matthew 26, and we're going to dance avec the stars. Avec is French for with. We're going to dance with the stars. Matthew 26, start at verse 1, and just follow me on this. Okay. Matthew 26, verse 1. Go ahead, sir. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. So we know that he, this is two days, two 24-hour periods, 48 hours before the Passover. Right. Okay. Skip down to verse 17. Verse 17. Go ahead, kind sir. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? So they're getting prepped for the Passover right now. They're not actually doing the Passover, so they're prepping for it. Right. In the daylight hours, they're prepping for it. Go ahead, kind sir. And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Okay, go ahead, sir. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Watch this. Go ahead, sir. Now when the even was come. Stop. Now we start the Passover. What? Now this is the day of the Passover, mm -hmm. and it's a full 24-hour period, and I'm going to let the Bible prove it. Go ahead, kind sir. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. So we know he's eating the Passover. Let's make sure he's eating and drinking the Passover. Verse 26, go ahead, sir. And as they were eating, Jesus, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. So we know he's eating, dealing with the Passover. Skip down to verse 33. Verse 33, go ahead, sir. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, Yet will I never be offended. Watch this. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crowed, for, for the cock crowed thou shalt deny me thrice. So he's given a time stamp. This is still the Passover when he's saying this, right? Skip down to verse 44. Verse 44. Go ahead, sir. And he left them and went away again and prayed a third time, saying the same words. Come on. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. So we know at the night of the Passover, right, or should I say the evening when it began, he was taken into custody. How do we know that? Skip down to verse 55. This is still 
Passover. This is the this is the the air quote night, but it's the beginning of Passover. It's the day. This is Passover day. Go ahead, sir. Verse 55. In that same hour, said Jesus to the multitudes, are you come out as against a thief with swords and sta staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple and ye laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Now, question. When when do we typically hear cocks crowing and or in the morning, right? OK, so he said at, at that night, you, before you before the before the it Passover ends or should I say this night, you're going to deny me thrice. Right. All right. So once I ain't objection, leading the witness, skip down to verse, skip down to verse 69. Go ahead, sir. Now, Peter sat without in the palace and a damsel came unto him, saying, that also was with Jesus of Galilee. Come on. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. Skip down to verse 74. Go ahead, sir. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. About what time is this? Early in the morning. Early in the morning? Yeah. Five, six yeah. in the morning? Is it still the Passover? Yeah. No. Oh, it's still the Passover. Oh, okay. Because how do we know it's still the Passover? Jesus Christ had to die on what day? Yeah, he died on Passover. Bam. The oh, cock just okay. crowed. Yeah. It's about 5, 6 in the morning. We'll go 4, 5, 6 in the morning, early in the morning. But it's still the Passover because they started that evening. They started eating that Passover evening, so that began the 24-hour clock. Now we, correct, it started the sequence of the day because they had to eat the Passover when it began. And it began at evening. That's why I said at even they sat down to eat the Passover. Now we got the cock crowing. It's morning, so it's the morning time hours of the Passover, but yet it's still the Passover. Yeah. 74, one more again, please. Y'all up, up to speed right now. Y'all mm -hmm. got me. Yeah. Okay, verse 74, go ahead, sir. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. Bam, it's six, five, six in the morning yeah, right. right now. Verse 75, go ahead, sir. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. Skip down to verse, go directly, in the, go directly into Matthew 27. How do I know it's the morning? Verse 1, go ahead, sir. When the morning was come. When what now? When the morning was come. Is it still Passover? Yes. Yeah. But they started Passover at night, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Cock crow, now it's the morning. It's still Passover, right? Finish that, please. All the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. How do I know it's still Passover? Skip down to verse 15, because this was a Passover custom. Verse 15. Go ahead, sir. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. Now, y'all remember that that's a Passover custom. Every Passover, the governor would release a prisoner to the to the children of Israel. They would, they would get a, basically a get-out-of-jail-free card. This is a Passover custom. This is how I know it's still Passover, and this is how I know Passover started in the evening because they started in the evening and the cock crowed in the morning came, and it's still Passover because they doing this right here. Y'all yeah. tracking with me out there? Yeah, loud and clear. Now watch this. How do I know it's still Passover in the morning time? Skip down to verse 45. Go ahead, kind sir. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Okay, still, it's still the daylight hours. We got a time stamp. It's still Passover, and it's still the daylight hours of Passover. Because remember, an evening and the morning makes a day. Go ahead, kind sir. Finish that. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lamash kabatani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Brother Reggie, can you, on your chart, tell us, what time the ninth hour is? What time of day is the ninth hour, sir? Just so I can make sure it's the daylight hours and I'm not misleading y'all. Ninth hour is it's about three to four p.m. There it is, three to four p.m. Uh -huh. Now watch this. Uh -huh. Skip down to verse fifty. Verse fifty. This is Jesus, because remember he has to die on the Passover. Period. Skip down to verse fifty. Go ahead, kind sir. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice. Yielded up the ghost. So Jesus is dead. The Passover lamb has been sacrificed on Passover. Now watch this. 
Feast of Unleavened Bread is about to start. Skip down to verse 57. Go ahead, sir. When the even was come. When what now? When the even was come. Come on. There came a rich man of Arimathea, Arimathea named Joseph, and also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Come on. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of a rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene. And the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Verse 62, go ahead. Now the next day, that followed the day of the preparation. The bread of what now? The day of the preparation. Because you know, there was a high Sabbath, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and Passover was the preparation day for that. So now we're into the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which began at even. So we have literally just walked through a whole day. And we see it's a 24-hour period starting at evening. Now, here's, that's the long version. Let me give you the short version of it. You can punch him in the face real quick, Martin. Watch this. Skip back to verse 26. I'm sorry, Matthew 26. Punch him in the face real quick. Watch this. Matthew 26, give me verse 20. Now, when even was come, he sat down with the 12. That's the start of the Passover. Now, skip. Go to Matthew 27 and give me verse 57. When the even was come, there came a rich man out of our Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. You can hit him with that. Yeah. And then when they look at you like, er, <laughs> then you go back and you just <laughs> waltz them through the whole thing. Yeah. You dig? We just literally biblically broke down how a day is, a 24-hour period in the day per the Bible. Can't nobody tell me that the day is only 12 hours. Yeah. Matthew 26, uh, and so what we did was we went Matthew 26, we hit 1 and 2, then we skipped down to verse 18 and 19, and then 20, and 20 is the start of Passover, you dig? 21, right, 20 and 21, and then we got, we got the Jesus Christ time stamp, which is verse 34, right, matter of fact, 33 through 35, that gives you the time stamp of the cock crowing, right? Then we go up in here, and then we show Jesus being betrayed into the hands of the sinners on the Passover because he got it down the Passover. So we hit verse 45, 45, 46, and then we confirm it that it's in the same hour, should I say that night, fit, verse 55. That's how we dancing through it, right? And then after we show that Christ gave the time stamp of the cock crowing, we actually show the cock crowing which is, we hit, I hit 70, just to kind of just set the tone, 70, and then 74, that's the, that's the time stamp, and then we know it's still Passover, then we actually show that it's still the, mor that it's the, the morning of the Passover by going directly into Matthew 27, hitting verse 1, and we see when the morning was come, so the cock crowed, the Bible corroborates that it's still morning, right? Then we skip down to verse 15 to show the Passover custom, which is a prisoner being released, right? And this is in the daylight hours, right? But remember, they started everything at the evening, right? So then now we skip into, uh, we skip down to verse 50 to show Jesus dying. And we know he's a Passover lamb and he got to die on the Passover. He came down on unleavened bread. He came down the day before Passover. He got to die on Passover, right? Then we skip down to verse 57 in Matthew 27 to show the evening coming and the evening coming is the first day of unleavened bread and we confirm that it's the first day of unleavened bread in a new day with verse 62 and that's how you walk through a whole day now if Negroes want to play games after that I'm gonna go close the Bible and go get me a hot, a hot dog or something <laughs> all right so I guess we handled the Sabbath disclaimer and all that stuff uh, let's get to the lesson I guess that was a mini lesson right that was Martin's fault, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Speaking of Passover and unleavened bread, understanding the Lord's holy convocation slash feast part two. I'm not being lazy. I'm going to look at the camera. I'm not being lazy. I know I did it last week, but I'm in Oakland, and I'm going to do it again because we're heading to the feast days, right? And I don't like doing this in the middle of the feast days. I like doing it before the feast days. And the objective of this lesson is literally to be able to explain the feast days. 
period, end of story. So I'm probably going to throw a couple of new, little free nuances up in here, you know what I mean, to in, enjoy ourselves and have some fun. But the bottom line is we have to be able to explain the feast days. It ain't like Thanksgiving or it ain't like Christmas that you can't find in the Bible. Like we literally need to be, we need to be like yeah. that part, showing why we do what we do. Like the reason I don't eat pork is because I can go to Leviticus 11 and say, this is why I don't eat pork. Mm -hmm. Now, why do you eat pork? Right, right. Yeah. So we need to be able to, because the folly days is coming. And yeah. right after we come out of our good, our great golly gee whiz good days, we're going to go directly into, <sighs> you know, when you walk into Home Depot, and you got a skeleton looking at you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> man, where is these hammers at, man? <laughs> if I get vexed. So without further ado and me flapping. Understanding the Lord's Holy Convocation slash Feast Part 2. And let's get into it. Leviticus 23. You see, brother, it says Sabbath day. <laughs> we children of the day, brother. What? What is that? What you children of, children of light? What that got to do with? We don't do stuff in the night, brother. Y'all know y'all heard that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, man. Lord have mercy. Leviticus 23. Understanding the Lord's holy convocations slash feasts. Part two. Leviticus 23, verse one. Go ahead, kind sir. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. Feast of the Jews. The feast of the Lord. Come on. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Holy what now? Holy convocation. Come on. Even these are my feasts. Now look at the first one. Go ahead, sir. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You should do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Now let's take a Sabbath detour. Let's go to Exodus 20. Let's look at the statutes of this thing. And this may seem redundant because I do a Sabbath disclaimer before every single lesson. But I'm going to do a Sabbath disclaimer before every single lesson so y'all know it's not cool to leave here and go buy some stuff while listening to Biggie. Give me one more chance on the way to the bar to go have a martini. Y'all not going to y'all not going to yeah. do that on my watch. Y'all going to learn today. <laughs> you going to learn today what the Sabbath is. Exodus 20. This is the detour so we can look at the statutes of the first holy convocation that the Lord spelled out in Leviticus. Exodus 20. We're going eight through eleven. Go ahead, kind sir. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Keep it what now? To keep it holy. Come on. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Well, a little bit of work. Any work. Come on. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant. Come on. Nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days... The Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Come on. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. This is the only day in creation that is blessed by God and set apart. Let's go to Deuteronomy 5. This day is special. And I know that we can take things for granted, right? Like, like children take, take their parents being alive and the things that their parents do for them for granted. Because it goes on for so long, but we can't never take this day for granted. Like, I don't care what I got going on in my life. I'm not going to miss the Sabbath unless I'm in the hospital or I'm on the run. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to keep the Sabbath in the cave someplace. Y'all understand right. what I'm talking about? Yeah. Because that's the first thing that, that the devil is going to try to get you to not do. He's going to try to get you to not congregate with people and keep the Sabbath. Verse 12, we're going 12 through uh, 14. Deuteronomy fever, 12 through 14. Go ahead, kind sir. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Come on. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. A little bit of work. Any work. Come on. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant. So if you got a business, your employees are not working Either. True. Straight up. Period. Shut your business down. If you're a black person, you say business. Right. Shut your business down. Go ahead, kind sir. 
nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger. Nor the what now? Nor thy stranger. Well, what's the stranger got to do with it? Oh, they are supposed to keep the Sabbath too. They're supposed to learn from us. If the stranger wasn't getting salvation, then why is he trying to get the stranger to do the things that would get the stranger salvation? If they ain't had nothing coming, if we got next. I'm just asking. Nor thy stranger that is within your gates. Go ahead, sir. That thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. Now, can I cook on the Sabbath? No. So y'all saying I can't get up in the morning to make some hot chicken and bring it to the Sabbath class and everybody break out the hot sauce? No. No? How I know? Exodus 35. Man, brother, you can't do nothing. Yeah, you can make some sandwiches. Yep. Right? Yep. Have a bowl of cereal. Come on now. Exactly. Act like not eating hot food for one day is like the end of the world. Yeah. You ever heard of a tuna, a tuna fish sandwich? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cold pizza. What are you talking about? It's called look for a solution. Man. Fruit salad. Yep. Right? Exodus 35. Literally, it's funny. The Sabbath is kind of my cheat day because when I go to class, you know, they got, you know, cookies and all types. Yeah. <laughs> During the week, though, I'll be running from that stuff, man. Yep. But on the Sabbath, I, oh, man. Exodus 35. Exodus 35, we're going one through three. No cooking. Go ahead, kind sir. And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded that ye should do them. And we should think about them. Yeah, ye should do them. Well, we should kind of do them because we kind of feel like doing them. That ye should do them. Come on. Six days shall work be done. But on the seventh day, there shall be to you an holy day. What kind of day? An holy day. Let that peek your ears. Go ahead, sir. A Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Come on. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So don't kindle no fire. Don't smoke. If you smoke, get you some gum and some patches. Put the patches on your arm. Put the gum in your mouth. That's it. Exodus 31. Let's also see what the Sabbath is. Not only is it a holy day set apart, but it's also this. Exodus 31. And we're going 12 through 18. Exodus 31, 12 through 18. Go ahead, kind sir. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying. Notice he says, Speak thou also. In addition to what I said, say this to him too. Go ahead, sir. Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. That ye may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. It is a sign between the Lord and his people. His people being not only Israel, but those who follow him and do what he says to do. It is a sign. Like, really, as the angels are sweeping across, across the land right now, and they're making notes of what people are doing, they're making notes of us up in here right now, keeping a holy convocation. It is a sign. Go ahead, Kaiser, verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Put to what now? Put to death. Come on. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Cut off means death. He said the same thing twice. Go ahead, sir. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. You think he's serious about killing people? Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. What kind of covenant? Perpetual covenant. Does anyone know what perpetual means? Everlasting. Yes. Forever. Forever. Right. D'Angelo. Right. D'Angelo and Jay-Z. Right. Yes, sir, it does. It means continuous, continual. It means forever perpetual it does not stop it's like the movement on a rolex the the, the 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 minute hand sweeps it doesn't tick that's why they call it a perpetual timepiece. verse 17 go ahead. and you got to get a service too and it ain't cheap to service it. verse 17 though go ahead sir it is a sign between me and the children of israel forever there you go bob you see that forever perpetual 
Continual, continuous. Don't stop. Can't stop. Won't stop. <laughs> but he got stopped. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I ain't going to make fun of Pete. I ain't going to make fun of him. That ain't cool. What he did wasn't cool, but I ain't making fun of him. I ain't going to kick a man when he's down, even though he videotaped him kicking people. Anyway, <laughs> 17 from the top. I got to stop. 17 from the top. Go ahead, bro. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Come on. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Now, back to the other feast days. Let's go back to Leviticus 23, back to the future. Leviticus 23, start at verse 4. Leviticus 23. <laughs> We're going four and we're going to dance and I got you, bro. Leviticus 23, verse four. And if anyone has ever heard about the Sabbath being according to the perpetual orbit of the moon, this is what they use to, 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 to kind of trick your brain. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this dumb, dumb doctrine also. Leviticus 23, give me verse four. Go ahead, sir. These are the feasts of the Lord. Even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Now, is convocations and seasons the same word? No. no. What they want to do is they want to take you into the concordance, into a book that was written in English to show you some Hebrew word that we think is Hebrew, to then give you some other English words in this book written by English, by, by Gentiles. So then, they, then you can pick some English words to take those English words and use those words against you. What do I mean by that? What I mean is they'll take you into the concordance and they'll say seasons, and then they'll show you a list of English words for seasons, and then they'll pick convocations out of that. I think it's like on line three, they'll take convocations out and they'll say, see, seasons means convocations. But that's sleight of hand. See that, yeah, that look on your face. You're like, why are they, do, why are they going through all of that? When it's clearly let you know convocations and seasons are two different things. If I tell y'all, tell me what a convocation is. Tell me what a convocation is. What we're doing right now. Okay. Yeah. Tell me what a season is. Fall, winter, summer, spring, different times of the year. That ain't the same as a convocation. But that's what they'll do. They'll start there. Please don't let them do that to you. Please don't let them do that to you. Yeah, but the problem is they want to sell you on the perpetual, the per, I'm sorry, the elliptical orbit of the moon, not the perpetual, the elliptical orbit of the moon. That's what they want to sell you on. And they sell you that by by making you and your brain switch convocations with seasons. So then every time you see seasons, you think convocations. But then when I go to it's a Psalm, I want to say 58, Psalm 58, like you can you can trap them there, but we ain't going to do all that. The point is. Don't fall for somebody trying to tell you that the elliptical orbit of the moon dictates the Sabbath. Y'all clear on that? Yeah, loud and clear. Bet that. Give me verse 4 one more again, then we're going to dance. Go ahead, sir. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Skip down to verse 23. Go ahead, kind sir. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month. In what month? In the seventh month. Which is what we're approaching right now. Go ahead, sir. In the first day of the month, should ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. That is the only new moon day that I know for certain is a Sabbath that I cannot buy or sell on. That's the only one I can clearly read in the scriptures. The, 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 uh, the, 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 the memorial of the blowing of trumpets. Now, let's go to Joel 2. We're talking about the seventh month. We're talking about the, bl the blowing of trumpets. Let's go to Broel. I like to call it Broel. Go to Broel 2. Joel 2. We're going 15 through 16. Joel 2, 
15 through 16. And this one verse contains all of the feast that we're about to celebrate. This one verse. Like this 15 and 16 is like a mouthful. It's like incredible. Like you literally think it's like a pack of ramen noodles, but it's literally like a five course meal mm -hmm. at a gourmet restaurant. For real. Mm. Bro L2. Give me 15 through 16. 15 has the last holy convocations of the year in this one verse. Go ahead, sir. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify it fast. Call a solemn assembly. Did y'all see it? Yep. Y'all yeah. see them? Yeah. The first one is what? Blow the trumpets. Second one is what? Day of Atonement. Third one is what? Tabernacles. What day of Tabernacles? This is Life day. day. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It is Tabernacles and it is the eighth day. Yes. All right. Too shady, y'all. Y'all got that. 16. Go ahead, sir. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. So let's deal with the last holy convocation of the year. Let's deal with trumpets. Joel 2. Skip up to verse 1. Joel 2. Give me verse 1. Go ahead, sir. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is near at hand. This is what, there's a past and a future connotation with trumpets. Let's see what the past connotation or what it memorializes. Let's go to Exodus 19. There's two connotations or two meanings. There's a past meaning and there's a future meaning. Exodus 19, blow a trumpet in Zion. That's what Joel said, blow a trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain, for the day of the Lord cometh. What is this event, what is this feast memorialized? What events of this feast are memorialized? Exodus 19, let's go one through 19. Go ahead, sir. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai, for they were departed from Remifidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. So they came out of Egypt, and they're at Horab. They're going to Horab <clears throat> to meet God. Go ahead, sir. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. With the same people, go ahead. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant. Two components. Go ahead. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, above all people. Some people. Above all people, for all the earth is mine. Give me fever one more again. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant then ye should be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Did we do that? No. We made an agreement, mm -hmm. but we didn't do it. That agreement is perpetual to be done. And here's, here's the, the consequences of following God, the positive consequences, or should I say not consequences, positive effects of following God. Verse 6, go ahead, sir. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Come on. And Moses came and called for the elders of, pe of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. In a what? In a thick cloud, come on, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. Stop. I come in a cloud. I'm coming to meet you in a cloud, and I'm I'm going to speak these words so you will hear, not see me, but you will hear and believe perpetually, forever. Go ahead, kind sir. Verse tension. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people. And sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. Let them do what? And let them wash their clothes. Come on. And be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down and inside of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Come on. 
and now I shall set bounds to the people round about. Wait, you saying the Lord is coming down to meet me, but I can't have direct access or contact with the Lord. Yeah, yeah. We can't have direct contact or access or deal with the Lord directly until the eighth day. That's when we have direct contact with the Father. That's when we have, we can literally look God in his face as he is. Well, if you don't make the first resurrection, but y'all get what I'm saying. Go ahead, kind sir. And now shall set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the, the mount shall be surely put to death. Come on. There shall not in hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Wait, they had pistols back? Oh, right. Yeah. Arrows. <laughs> shot through. Mm -hmm. A gun ain't nothing but an but a arrow. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. It just shoots rocks at you. Yeah. That's all it does. Go ahead, sir. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet sounded long, they shall come up to the mount. When the trumpet sounds long, that's when you come up to the mount. The trumpet lets you know when to come to deal with God, when to see God, when to meet God, when God is coming. That's what the trumpet memorialized back then. Go ahead, kind sir. And Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. What does come not at your wives mean? Don't lay with them. That's right. That's right. That's right. No Macarena, right? No tender love. No tender love on the Sabbath. <laughs> That's when you Mackin and then you Raina, okay? <laughs> Verse 16, <laughs> go ahead. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and a voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. So that all the people that was in the camp trembled. So you see the trumpet, you see the voices, the thunderings and the lightnings with the trumpet. You see it in the past. You'll see it in the future. I'm getting ahead of myself. Go ahead, sir. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. To have a barbecue. To meet with God. To shoot dice. To meet with God. Come on. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. Literally, that's what the trumpets memorialized. The event of the children of Israel, our forefathers and mothers meeting God. Like in reality, not not in my mind meeting mm -hmm. God, but like God literally on the mountain. I see and hear Lord, trumpet. I see and hear lightning. I see and hear thunder. And I hear God call Moses with an audible voice out of a thick cloud. I don't think we really understand how how wow. crazy that is. Like if we saw that in reality right now, yeah, we make a golden calf. I ain't going to say we wouldn't have made a golden calf. Yeah, we crazy. We crazy. Verse 18, no. Verse 18, go ahead, sir. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. Come on. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Give me 19 one more again. We don't even understand what that right. is. Go ahead, sir. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long, and waxed louder and louder. Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. Literally, the trumpet is getting louder and louder while an earthquake is going on, while the mountain is shaking, while the sky is darkened by fire, right, and smoke, and God is, and Moses is like, yo, and God is like, what's popping? Right. <laughs> Y'all dig that? Yeah. That's ill. Somebody got to show me, somebody got to show me Another nation of people mm -hmm. that can speak to God and God answers them by his voice. Yeah. Right. Exodus 20. And this is what God said when Moses was like, yo, this is what God said. Exodus 20. He's leading with the things that's going to save us. Exodus 20 verses one through six. And we're going to dance. Go ahead, kind sir. And God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God. Oh, who spoke these words? God. Buddha. No. Okay, just make sure. Go ahead, sir. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Come on. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Come on. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity 
of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Come on. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now skip down to verse 18. This is how the Lord spoke to Moses. Go ahead. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet. The noise of the what? And the noise of the trumpet. Come on. And the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. This is what the trumpets memorialize these events in the past. Voices, thunderings, lightnings, meeting with God, total panic and fear. That's what we're talking about, right? Now, the future connotation is this, Revelation 8. The formal giving of the commandments to the children of Israel to teach the world, that's what the past connotation of these trumpets are. The future connotation is this. Revelation 8, we're going 6 through 8. That was the past. This is the future. And as you see, ain't nothing changed. It's the same thing. Revelation 8, 6 through 8, and we're going to dance. Go ahead, my brother. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets. How many trumpets? Seven trumpets. Come on. Prepare themselves to sound. Go ahead, sir. The first angel sounded. And there followed hell and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees was burnt up. And all the grass was burnt up. This is during tribulation. I dare go out on a limb and say this is in the last, the, the, this is in the last six months of tribulation. And I want y'all to glean this. We got an audible trumpet sounds. And then after the audible trumpet sounds, where the whole planet can hear it, Mind you, God is up there looking at everybody. This just so I'm very clear. Then comes hail mixed with fire and blood. So we got a fiery sleet. Think about it. We got hail, which is ice, icy. But then we got fire and we got blood. So we got a slushy, bloody, fiery. Y'all tracking with me out there. That's cr that, that, that's like a horror movie right there. Yeah. And as a result of the slushy, fiery hail, a third of vegetation on the planet burns up. Mm -hmm. Where do we get our food from? Where, where do we get, like, where do our, where's our broccoli coming from? Our almonds, our apricots, our grapes. Mm -hmm. Like, where's that coming from? It's coming from trees, right? Mm -hmm. A third of that, gone, toast. And all... <laughs> The green grass. What, what do your animals eat? You hear me? Are people going to be hungry? When people are hungry, are they nice? <laughs> that's, what that, that's what them Snickers commercials is about, right? <laughs> Negroes are turning into Joe Pesci in them commercials, right? Right? They had Willem Dafoe turn into Marilyn Monroe because <laughs> he was hungry. Y'all get what I'm saying, though? Yeah. People ain't nice when they're hungry and thirsty. Give me verse 8. Go ahead, kind sir. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Verse 10. Skip to verse 10. Go ahead, sir. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of many the men, waters. Many men what now? And many men died Come on. of the waters. Why? Because they were made bitter. So a third of your fresh water sources you will not be able to drink anymore. Your hydrological cycle is messed up. You got to understand, during the, during the prophecy of the two witnesses, right, they have the power to do what? They have to shut the heavens That part. They had the power to shut the heavens. So y'all got to understand, at this point, three years, there ain't been no rain on the planet anyway. So it has only gotten worse is the problem. It gets worse and worse. Verse 12. Go ahead, sir. And a fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone, shone not for the third part of it. So... In a 24-hour period, if you break it down into threes or thirds, that's eight. So you got 16 hours of darkness, and you got eight hours of scorching heat, because Isaiah tells you that the sun will be beaming like sevenfold. 
So you hungry, you thirsty, you hiding from the sun because you're getting burned up because it's like 115, 120 outside. And then when the sun goes down, you like, thank God it's night. But then at night, you got the dark seekers trying to be up in your living room seeking some water that you might have at your house. Y'all tracking with me out there. It's Hunger Games. It's, it's I Am Legend. It's, it's, it's Dawn of the Dead. It's all that. Where do you think they're getting that from? They're getting it from fourth dimensional beings that are telling them bits and pieces of what's right. If you don't think Hollywood is, is dealing with some fourth dimensional beings to get these weirdo scripts and these weirdo movies from, y'all deceived. This is what they're all writing about. And I pray to the most high that I'm in the wilderness. Verse 13, though. Go ahead, kind sir. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth by the reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. He's like, man, it's about to get worse. Go on to Revelation 9. Give me one through two. Revelation Nina, one through two. Go ahead, kind sir. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now this is an angel. Go ahead, sir. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Skip to verse 13. Go ahead, sir. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had a trumpet, Loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Come on. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. At a precise moment, during pure pandemonium, these four angels are going to be released so they can dry up the river Euphrates so a great army can march with the specific purpose of killing a third of the humans that are left. Because remember, people didn't drink some water and wormwood and killed them and then the, the fourth seal is war on the earth. So the people that are left that have survived the seals are going to be killed, a third of them. Go ahead, sir, verse 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. Go directly into Revelation 10. Revelation 10. These, this lesson is only an overview. I'm not getting into the deep minutia or, the, or, gra or the granular view of trumpets. This is just a brief overview of what trumpets is. Skip down to, ver I'm sorry, Revelation 10, verse 7. Go ahead, kind sir. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God shall be finished. And he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Now let's go into Revelation 11. It's talking about the mystery of God. This is the mystery of God that don't nobody know. That the kingdom of God is coming. We're not going. It's coming. That's a great mystery. Revelation 11. How do I know? Revelation 11, 15 through 19. Revelation 11, 15 through 19. Go ahead, sir. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of, Christ, of, excuse me, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. How many do we see there? Two. Two. Right. Two. The kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ is two. If it's the Holy Ghost... If the Holy Ghost is equal to the Father and Son, let me be very clear. If the Holy Ghost is equal to the Father and the Son, where he at? He should be right there. But he's not. He's not. This is the current Godhead right here. This is the Godhead right here. Give me verse 15 one more again from the top. Go ahead, sir. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Come on. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power come and on. hast reigned. Come on. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the, and the, time of the dead that they shall be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto the servants, thy prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. I don't think y'all understand how much is in verse 18. 
Give me verse 18 from the top. Watch how it goes from first resurrection to eighth day and back. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Verse 18. Go ahead, sir. And the nations were angry. Notice it said the nations were angry, but they still angry at the time when this is going on because it's not done yet. But it's speaking like it's done. Go ahead, sir. And thy wrath is come. Like it's already happened. Go ahead, sir. And the time of the dead, that day should be judged. That's the eighth day. That's leading to the eighth day right there. Go ahead, sir. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints. But that's the first resurrection, though. Because right, right, right. mm -hmm. the dead in Christ will rise first. Yep. So seventh trumpet, back to Adam's time, everyone that served God got their reward. Yep. Like 18 is hard. Go ahead, sir. Finish it. And them that fear thy name, small and great. Come on. And should have destroyed them which destroyed the earth. Wait, and destroy the people that destroyed the earth. These major corporations that destroyed the earth. Verse 19, go ahead, sir. And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. Watch this, go ahead. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Give me verse 19. It was just like Exodus 20, verse 18. Verse 19 of Revelation says, go ahead, sir. And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there were seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. In the future, seven trumpets brings the coming of the Lord. And after, and after the seventh one, then comes the king. And the only reason that human beings are not annihilated or wiped out completely is because of atonement, which follows trumpets. Let's go back to Leviticus 23. The ordinance of atonement involves an animal just like Passover. Atonement is similar to Passover. Atonement is the reminder at the, at the end of the year to continue on. Just like Passover is at the beginning of the year to remind you to have faith and to keep fighting. Y'all tracking with me out there. Mm -hmm. Animal sacrifice, once in the beginning of the year, Passover, leads to unleavened bread, and then atonement where your sins have been placed on a scapegoat. Whereas you're coming under the blood of the lamb for Passover, and then with atonement, your sins have been put upon someone else. Same thing twice. Leviticus 23, a little bit different nuance, but essentially the same thing. It was a reminder to keep the faith and stay the course. Leviticus 23, we're going 26 through 32. Leviticus 23, 26 through 32. Go ahead, kind sir. And the Lord is thinking to Moses saying, also on the 10th day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be in holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offering and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Come on. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. So notice in the first day of the month you got trumpets, and then like nine days later you have the atonement. Go ahead, kind sir. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day. He shall be cut off from among his people. Watch this. Go ahead, sir. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. So the ordinance of atonement is like the weekly Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You do no work. Mm -hmm. It's clear. It's not, the or not, a, not a nuance like servile work. It is no work. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, kind sir. You should do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. 31, one more again, please. You should do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Come on. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls. And the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Give me 32, one more again. I'm, I'm confused. If the Sabbath is only during the daylight hours, then why is he telling me that in the ninth day of the month at evening, to the, other, to the other evening or the next day, I should celebrate my Sabbath. If indeed the Sabbath is only 12 hours. Why is it even talking about the ninth day? Because I thought on the 10th day you should celebrate. Oh, right, because on the ninth day at evening starts the 10th day. Ah, duh, right? Give me 32 one more again. Go ahead, sir. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. Now, how do you afflict your souls? Do I, I punch myself in the face. I stab myself with pins. I walk on hot coals all day. What is it? No food or drink. No food. No food and drink. 
That's it. That's it. Let's go to Esther 4. <laughs> nah, I don't. Like Gregorian monks walking down this uh, an Italian city with an effigy or should I say an idol of God. Some dudes carrying an idol of God and I'm... Working yourself. Right. Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm -hmm. Nah, bruh. Nah. No Fifty Shades of Grey, man. <laughs> Esther 4. <laughs> Esther 4. I remember I watched the documentary on that. I was just sitting there freaking amazed. I mean, I'm talking about them dudes was actually opening up straight lacerations. That's the good word. They was getting last. They were lacerating themselves. I'm like, wee. What y'all smoking? They off that yarn, boy. They <laughs> yarned out. <laughs> a, a, a Negro on yarn would do that, Jack. <laughs> Young Sherman Hemsley. <laughs> <laughs> Esther 4. Nah. Huh? They probably had a dun dun on. Do you dig what I'm talking about? <laughs> Esther 4. <laughs> uh uh. <laughs> and I bet everybody in here got a homie on Sherm story, Jack. <laughs> Esther 4. Give me 15. <laughs> Give me 15 through 16. This is how you afflict your soul. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. <laughs> Then Esther bade them return. Mordecai this answer. <laughs> Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me. Here we go. Go ahead, sir. And neither eat nor drink three days, not a day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. That's how you afflict your soul. You ain't got to get all super dramatic and everything else. Matter of fact, put a smile on your face. Problem is, though, around the evening time of the Day of Atonement, a lot of people's smiley faces ain't smiling no more. That's fine, too. I can dig it. Everybody don't like walking around smelling hot sh shoe leather breath, you dig? <laughs> Let's go to Psalm 35. And please brush your teeth on, on the Day of Atonement. Don't come up to me talking about, hello. <laughs> you must go. <laughs> I, I give everybody that. I give everybody that. Four, yeah, how you doing, brother? Shabbat. Shalom to you. <laughs> Psalm 35. Why do we afflict our soul? What, is, what does it actually mean? Like, what are we doing? And this is a perfect scripture to demonstrate why we afflict our soul. Psalm 35, 11 through 14. This is love your enemy for real. Go ahead, kind sir. False witnesses did rise up. Matter of fact, give me verse one. Curveball. Give me verse one and we're going to dance. Verse one, go ahead, sir. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Give me one, one more again. Go ahead, sir. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. You're seeking the Lord to handle something for you. That's one of the reasons of a fast. Primary reason is we seek in the Lord for him to give us an answer. Now skip down to verse 11. Watch this. Go ahead, sir. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Come on. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. Go ahead. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting. Stop. I humbled my soul with fasting. Go ahead, sir. And my prayer returned into my own bosom. Give me 13 one more again. When you, when you fast... You're humbling your soul, your flesh to God. Watch this. Go ahead, sir. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. 14. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. Now, that's love your soul. This person is literally fasting for the Lord to fight his battles and he's fasting for his enemy and he's not happy that his enemy, like he said, I behave myself as though he had been a friend or a brother. Okay. He said he literally bowed down heavily as one that mourns for his mother. That's love your enemy for real. That's part of the fast though, is the point. You're humbling your soul, you're seeking the Lord and this is love your enemy for real. Let's go to Psalm 109. 
We are chastening, humbling our flesh before the Lord. We seeking God's attention. That's one of the primary ways you get God's attention by forsaking your need for survival. Like literally your need and my need for survival. And don't nobody want to be hungry. Psalm 109. And we don't fast for fashion because I know it's fashionable. Intermittent fasting is good for you to weight loss. No, we ain't doing it for that. We're doing it because we commanded to do it and we're looking for a result. Psalm 109, 22 through 24. Psalm 109, 20, 22 through 24. Go ahead, sir. For I am poor and needy and my heart is wounded within me. I am gone like a shadow when it declineth. I am tossed up and down as the locusts. When you down and you going through some stuff, fasting is kind of a really, it's a great thing you need to do. And I know we kind of forget it. We just kind of like as men, I just kind of white knuckle it. When I'm going through it, I'm just white knuckle it. Yep. I just kind of tense up and just. Uh, uh. Up. Yeah. But I can white knuckle it and fast because he said, I am going like the shadow when it declineth. I am tossed up and down as the locust. 24 is what we came here for. Go ahead, sir. My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh faileth of fatness. 24, one more again. Go ahead, sir. My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh faileth of fatness. We are humbling ourselves, forsaking our survival, and we're taking a small part in Christ's death. I'm talking about a small, small part. Mm -hmm. And we're also seeking God's attention. We're seeking his face. Go to Ezra 8. Y'all track it with me out there. Loud and clear. Fasting is a good thing to do. Ezra 8. And depending on how long you've ever fast, you can definitively identify where my knees are weak through fasting. <laughs> your body be like, your stomach's like, hey, so how long are we going to do this? Your brain is like, I'm not listening to you. I'm not listening to you. Ezra 8. I remember I did 48 hours and I was, I, I was Joe Pesci, Willem Dafoe. I was all the mass Snicker Bar commercials. <laughs> Ezra 8. Man. Mm. Ezra 8. I ain't never done that. <laughs> Turn into Pookie. <laughs> Ezra 8, give me verse 15. When we fast, we seek in God's attention because we are forsaking our basic survival need of nourishment. We need nourishment. Ezra 8, give me verse 15. Go ahead, sir. And I gathered them together to the river that runneth to Ahava, and there abode we in tents three days. And I viewed the people and the priests. And found there none of the sons of Levi. I'm just dealing with the essentials of a fast. I'm not dealing with the atonement aspect of it and the scapegoat. Not dealing with that per se. Skip down to verse 21. Just what you do on that day. 21. Go ahead, sir. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for, our, and for all our substance. Give me 21 one more again. Go ahead, sir. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. That's what you're doing when you and I fast. We're seeking God on a matter. If you got a real important matter, fast on that joint. Fast on that joint. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? 22, go ahead, sir. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way. Because we have spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. He kind of was embarrassed because he had bragged on God to the king. And then he's like, Now after all of that, can I get an army to accompany us there? So that's why he was seeking God's face. Watch this. Verse 23. Go ahead, sir. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. Give me 24. Go ahead, sir. Then I separated 12 of the chief of the priests. Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and ten of their brethren with them. Come on. And weighed unto them the silver and the gold, and the vessels, even the offering of the house of our God, which the king and his counselors and his lords and all Israel 
their uh, their present had offered. Come on. I even weighed unto their hands six hundred and fifty talents of silver, and silver vessels and hundred talents, and of gold and hundred talents. Skip down to verse thirty. Go ahead, sir. So took the priests and the Levites the weight of the silver and the gold and the vessels to bring them to Jerusalem unto the house of our God. Go ahead, sir. Then we departed from the river of Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go unto Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us, and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy, and of such as lay in wait by the way. That was the result of the fast. He delivered them, protected our forefathers and mothers all the way into Jerusalem. All right? Let's go to Romans 5. When you get God's attention, then we get a chance at the grace and the mercy for obedience. And that's the other aspect. That's the other aspect of atonement. Because the Lord did not have to put our sins on his back. Did the Lord sin? No. That's like you taking a charge for somebody. That's like they run up in your house and they find a couple of keys. And then you and your cousin's there and you take the charge for your cousin, even though he's the biggest drug dealer on the planet. And you take that 20. That 20. That's what the Lord did. He took that 20. Y'all tracking with me out there? Loud and clear. He didn't have to. He could have just destroyed the whole world again and started fresh and just keep doing it because to him it's nothing. Yeah. Romans 5, but praise the Lord for his mercy. The grace and the mercy when we get God's attention. And our God was entreated for us and we went into Jerusalem with our gold and our silver and our vessels. Y'all dig? Mm -hmm. Romans 5, give me one through three and we're going to dance. Go ahead, sir. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Give me five one more again. That's the scapegoat, but I'm not dealing with that, but I am lightweight. Go ahead, sir. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. By whom also we have access by faith and this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So we are justified by the faith and we got access to the grace. And with the grace, we have the hope. Faith, grace, and hope. Because we don't know if we made it until we made it. Right. Y'all tracking with me out there? Go ahead, kind sir. Verse 3. Watch this, though. Go ahead, sir. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So you got the faith, which gets you the grace, which gets you the hope to make it through the tribulations to get some patience to endure the tribulations. Doesn't sound like a cakewalk, do it? No. Right. Skip down to verse Nina. Verse 9. A lot of work. Go ahead, sir. Much more than. Oh, snap. Here we go. Being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We shall be saved from wrath through him. His wrath. We're going to be saved from his wrath through him. Y'all tracking with me out there. Yeah. Go ahead, kind sir. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Give me verse 10 one more again. Go ahead now. For if. When we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Stop. When we were enemies in our sins, we were reconciled by his death to God. Because first of all, the God the Father has to draw you to Christ to be drawn to him. So it's a path, right? Faith leads to the grace, which leads to the hope. And after the hope, the tribulation, which leads to more patience to endure the tribulations, which leads to being justified by his blood and saved from his wrath. Y'all see the road? Yeah. It's paved with bumps and bruises. Go ahead, sir. Much more being reconciled, we should be saved by his life. Come on. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Atonement is basically this. We, f we afflict our souls to take part in his death and realize that our sins have been placed on the scapegoat. Christ was the scapegoat. Not only is the scapegoat, but he's also the high priest, so he's also the one that will forgive our sins. So he's taking them on, he'll forgive them as long as we do what we do. Y'all tracking with me out there, right? And if we continue in, then we get gathered to the wedding supper of the Lamb, and that's tabernacles. Y'all tracking with me out there? All right, good. Let's go to Hosea. Tabernacles is here. And I ain't talking about Don Juan, neither. Hosea 12. 
Hosea 12. The first thing the devil wants to make you and I believe we need to do is stay home on the Sabbath when we're going through something. But when we're going through something, this is the place we need to be getting refreshed, getting our souls refreshed. And when I say our souls refreshed, I mean our bodies, getting our spirits wiped clean and getting our souls refreshed by some brotherly love yeah. and sisterly love. Y'all dig what I'm talking about? Loud and clear. Because at the house, if you're going through it, you're going to be in your head at the house going through it. Yeah. Hosea 12. Tabernacles is here. Getting gathered. And it's called, I'm getting ahead of myself. Hosea 12, one verse. Verse 9. Go ahead, sir. And I, that am the Lord thy God, from the land of Egypt, will yet make thee to dwell in the tabernacles, as in the days of the solemn feasts. That is tabernacles. Tabernacles has the first day and the eighth day, they mean two different things. The first day is what we're about to deal with right now. The first day of tabernacles is what we're about to deal with right now. And it's called the Feast of Ingathering also. Exodus 23. Tabernacles, the first day means something to completely different than the eighth day. But it all lines up. Just like Passover leads into unleavened bread, and there's a first and a seventh day, but it starts with Passover, and it's called the days of unleavened bread because you're eating unleavened bread for all of those eight days. Tabernacles has eight days also. You have the Passover sacrifice, and then you have the atonement sacrifice, which leads directly into tabernacles. Exodus 23. It's also called the Feast of Ingathering. Exodus 23, verse 16. Go ahead, sir. And the Feast of Harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the Feast of Ingathering, which is the end of the year, which thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Let's go to Leviticus 23. I will make you to dwell in tabernacles, as in the days of the solemn feast. That's what Hosea said. It's also called the Feast of Ingathering. How is the Lord going to make us dwell in tabernacles like in the day of the solemn feast? He had to come get us. He got to come get us first, right? Well, Martin, you say, come get her. <laughs> come get her. <laughs> Leviticus 23. He got to come get us first. Leviticus 23. This is what the first day of tabernacles is. It is the ingathering. It is the regathering of Israel. Leviticus 23, we're going 33 through 43. Leviticus 23, we're going 33 through 43. Go ahead, sir. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak it to the children of Israel, saying, the 15th, yeah, the 15th day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. Ye shall do no serve our work therein. Come on. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be in holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. It's a what now? It is a solemn assembly. Just a fancy way of saying a holy convocation. Go ahead, sir. And ye shall do no servile work therein. Now, I don't get into the middle of my elders and the disagreement that they have on should we feast on the eighth day or not. Because when I read this, verse 35 says on the first day of tabernacles, we have a holy convocation and we do no servile work. Mm -hmm. And in verse 36 says on the eighth day, we have a holy convocation and we do no servile work. If I was not to do anything, it should read like atonement. It should read like the weekly Sabbath and I should be able, I should have to do no work, but it delineated that I, I can't do any servile work. Y'all tracking with me out there. Mm -hmm. Servile work, servile work is the work that you do to get paid. So it's saying on the first day, I don't go to my job and on the eighth day, I don't go to my job, but there is some work I can do on the first day as it pertains to the feast. Mm -hmm. And on the eighth day, there's some work that can be done as it pertains to feasting. Go ahead, kind sir. Give me verse 36 one more again. Go ahead, sir. Seven days you shall offer an offering by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day it shall be in holy convocation unto you. Just like the first day. Go ahead. And you shall offer an offering by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. And you shall do no servile work therein. I shall do no work therein. No servile work therein. Just like on unleavened bread. No servile work. Mm -hmm. Just like on, on trumpets. No servile work. Just like on the first day of tabernacles, no servile work. The eighth day says no servile work. Atonement says no work. Weekly Sabbath says no work. Y'all see the nuances and the differences. I'm not going to get into an argument over whether I can feast on the eighth day or not 
because it should be clearly spelled out that I can't do any work. Mm -hmm. Verse 37. Watch this. Hosea said 12, Hosea 12 said, I'm going to make you dwell in tabernacles. Watch this. Go ahead, sir. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon his day. Come on. Beside the Sabbath of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which you give unto the Lord. Come on. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Notice this is after the harvest, and in the seventh month, the harvest is the grapes. This is the grape harvest. So it's after you have harvested is when you actually, excuse me, perform or, or keep this holy day. The symbolism of it. It's the symbolism of it that we're talking about. Verse 40. Go ahead, sir. And you shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. How many days? Seven days. Come on. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in a year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Come on. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. How many days? Seven days. Come on. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Come on. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. All that are Israelites shall dwell in booths so they can remember that I brought them out of the land of Egypt and gathered them into the Sinai at Mount Horeb. Y'all tracking with that. Mm -hmm. Y'all see this. Y'all see when we came out, we were gathered. And in the seventh month, we're going to be gathered. That's why it's called the Feast of Ingathering, right? And it's talking about dwelling in booths in the seventh month and being gathered. Now, watch this. Go back to Joel 2. Now, let's see that. Let's see verse 16. Joel 2, verse 16. We're going to break each component down as it pertains to tabernacles. It's no coincidence that verse 15 has all of the last feast in the seventh month, and then 16 concentrates specifically on tabernacles. Watch this. All that the Israelites shall, that are born shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt or when he gathered us out of the land of Egypt. Joel 2, verse 16. And this right here, this right here, each one of these components pertains to tabernacles. Watch. Joel 2, verse 16. Go ahead, sir. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Give me 16 one more again, brother. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation. Stop. Y'all see how that pertains to tabernacles? Mm -hmm. Off top, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, though. Okay? In order for you to sanctify the congregation, we all know what has to happen. Set apart. So you got to first gather everything and then you got to separate what's pleasing. Watch this, though. Assemble who? Go ahead, sir. Assemble the elders. Come on. Gather the children. Come on. And those that suck the breast. So gather everybody and watch this. Go ahead, sir. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber. Stop. Who that? Jesus. In the seventh month, he going to gather his people. And who is his people? Go ahead, kind sir. And the bride out of her closet. Who's the bride? Israel, Israel the church. Yeah. Now give me 16 from the top. Go ahead, sir. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Y'all see how it pertains to tabernacles? Mm -hmm. All of that is talking about Christ gathering his people. His bride. Deuteronomy 30. Let's see it again. And this right here is, is how you count down the tribulation when you see this pop off. Now, I know I, I kind of have a disagreement with some of the bros. Some of the bros think it's right around the corner. I, I don't know. I don't think we're preaching the right gospel. I don't think we, as a whole, Israel is preaching the right gospel. But maybe I'm in my little iron bubble and I don't see what's going on. I know Israel is preaching the curses and the blessings, but right after they finish telling the person that they Israel and sidebar rant. 
Has anybody ever seen one of them, one of them, one of the, bro, the bruise on the corner approach an Israelite and tell them that they are Gentile? Mm -mm. Then why are they telling us that they were, that we Gentiles? Like, why I got to come into the truth, figure out that I'm Israel because you taught me I'm Israel to then have this, this doctrine that Gentiles or Northern Kingdom Israelites that didn't know that they was Israel. Y'all tracking with me out there. I've never seen any of them approach you first and tell you you were Gentile because shouldn't that be what they should be telling you? If do you feel me? If you don't know, according to them, the theory is you, you, if you don't keep the laws and the statutes and the judgments and you go by the ways of the heathen and the customs of the heathen and serve the gods of the heathens, then you're a Gentile, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then why are they approaching a brother say, hey, brother, you know, you were, you know, you were Jew, right? You know, you were Hebrew. Uh, why do they do that? <laughs> why are they leading with that? And then they tell you the, 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 the underhand alley you Harlem Globetrotters ball spin. <laughs> Y'all track it with me out there. Right? Right. Teach Dre he's a Gentile first, then teach Dre after he understands who he is that he's an Israelite. Don't teach him he's Israel first when he's a Gentile according to their weirdo doctrine. Y'all tracking with me out there. Yeah. I've never seen them in reality demonstrate that doctrine. Mm -hmm. They ain't never came up to you, Bob, and said, Bob, brother, you know you were Gentile, right? You one of the nations, right? They don't do that. They doctrine don't match their actions is the point. Stop trying to do the curly ball spin on me, Jack. Stop whistling. You understand what I'm saying? Stop the Harlem Globetrotters theme song. Y'all hear me? Deuteronomy 30. But my point with the sidebar rant is I hear them teaching the blessings and the curses, but right after that, they teaching, we got next, kiss my feet, not repent for the kingdom of heaven is, is coming. That's the doctrine that gets the whole world to change. Not you, Israel. Chingy knew he was Israel and he fell back asleep. Kendrick knew he was Israel and fell back asleep. Right? Did not Kendrick have it in a song? I'm an Israelite. Don't call me black no more. And then two albums later, he got a cross on with some thorns on his head. Y'all tracking with me? That's a good thing to know that we the children of Israel, but the doctrine is repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand to all nations. And then they'll stop selling shrimp at Red Lobster. Red Lobster will close down. The shareholders will get mad. They'll stop having football games, basketball games, and all types of sporting events on the Sabbath. And then the economy goes in a direction because we telling them what they need to be doing and how they serve God. Y'all track it with me out there. That's why I'm thinking we got a you know, few hundred years. 100 years, 150, 200 years, because we ain't preaching repent to all nations. We preaching all nations suck and Israelites is North, Northern Kingdom Gentiles that lost their iPhone and their passport and their wallet. Right. That's what they teaching. Trash. Anyway, let me stop ranting. Wusa. Deuteronomy 30, 1 through 4. This is what starts the tribulation for us. This is what brings Drake, Jacob's trouble. This. When you start seeing this, you can literally count down to when Jacob's trouble is going to pop. Deuteronomy 30. When you look in reality, you see on the news a whole bunch of Gentiles like, we're going to stop celebrating Christmas because God doesn't like it. <laughs> Jesus doesn't like it. That's when you'd be like, oh, snap. <laughs> that's, when you get, that's when you get nervous. Y'all track it with me. We're not going to eat pork anymore because God doesn't like it, golly. You know, and they get mad. They throw stuff. <laughs> they get the tripping, boy. Mm -hmm. Gee whiz. <laughs> This is when you know. Deuteronomy 30. This is when you know. Outside of my mind, I look at outside and see this happening. That's when I'm going to get nervous. Deuteronomy 30. Watch this. One through four. Go ahead, sir. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God have driven thee. Stop. Okay. We got that part. Yes. We got that part. But watch this. Go ahead, sir. And shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. We lack in that part. Yeah. We're lacking that part, and we're lacking teaching the other nations that part. Y'all tracking with me out Loud there. Clear. 
In our congregation, it is a house of prayer for all people. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to convince Lorenzo and Jaime that they're the tribe of Asser to allow them to come in and serve God. There's no frame. Yeah. It's just repent. Right. Mm -hmm. Y'all tracking with me out there. Right. This is the part that we lacking right here. Gotcha. And this is the part that the world is lacking at large. But once this happens, then this is going to happen. 30, verse 3, go ahead, sir. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. That's the bridegroom. You see the stages and steps to, to tribulation. Go ahead, sir. And have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Lord thy God has scattered thee. This is tribulation, how it starts. This is the roadmap to tribulation. When we see this, we know we close. We know we close. Verse 4, go ahead, sir. If any of thine be driven out unto the out, outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he bring thee. This is the feast of ingathering. That is how it pops off. That's what leads into tribulation. That's what leads to the 2300 days and the sacrifice of the temple and all of that. When we start preaching the right gospel to all nations, we let them know we the true children of Israel and also that they can have, they can be grafted in and they can serve God, our God. And that's when it, that's when it gets so bad for us because Gentiles is listening that it gets so bad that the, that the chokehold from the construct gets super tight. Like, a, like Willie D said, tight. That's what's that's going to happen. Go to John 3. Let's see the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber. It's got to get Willie Dynamite tight. Y'all understand what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? Yeah. It's got to get that tight for us. <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about. We got to keep it tight. <laughs> like, dang, okay. <laughs> Vision. <laughs> <laughs> How you know about that? You got to have. <laughs> yeah, that's a pimp movie right there, boy. That'll have you tripping. <laughs> John 3. Let's see the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber. John 3, 27 through 31. Go ahead, kind sir. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. You mean all the bad luck I'm having right now is given to me from heaven? Mm -hmm. Ah, ah, yep. <laughs> ow, <laughs> yep. God only does good, ow, 28, go ahead, sir. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am, I am sent before him. Now the thesis is he's talking about the Christ. Watch what he says now. Go ahead, sir. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. Christ said, my sheep do what? Listen to me. Hear my voice. And he just said, he, look, yo, I'm not Christ, but I'm the one that comes after. Then he goes into this whole bridegroom analogy, and he's talking about the people rejoicing because they have the bridegroom and they hear his voice. Y'all tracking with me out there. Yep. And he's talking about Christ. This is how we know that Christ is the bridegroom. Verse 30. Go ahead, kind sir. He must increase, but I must decrease. Which is one of your lines in one of yeah. your raps, by the way. <laughs> Give me that one more again. Go ahead, sir. He must increase, but I must decrease. That part. Give me verse 31. Go ahead, sir. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Well, let's see the bridegroom come from heaven then. Revelation 19. Let's see the bridegroom come out of his chamber to get the bride out of her closet. Because remember, the bride is in the closet. And we ain't going to talk about why the bride is in the closet now. I think we know why she's in the closet. Right. Yeah. The bride was in the closet because she was acting a fool. Revelation 19. He that cometh from above is above all. He that ascendeth far above all heavens to the third heaven is who he's talking about, which is the bridegroom. Why you men stand gazing up the same way you saw him leave is the same way you'll see him come. Well, let's see the bridegroom come and gather his people for the feast of ingathering so they can dwell in the tabernacle of God. Revelation 19. Let's go 11 through 13 and we're going to dance and I got you, my brother. Revelation 19, 11 through 13. Go ahead, kind sir. And I saw heaven opened. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness 
He don't judge and make war. In righteousness, he kill people. Let's, let's know that. Let's notice it's righteous murder. Oh, that baby that died, righteous death. We don't know why. Right. Our cousin that died, our mama, big mom. Look, our thoughts are not his thought. Our afflictions that we have, righteous. It could be to prevent us from having something, us turning right what we're doing good. We don't know, but in righteousness, he does judge and make war, and everything we have comes from heaven. Y'all tracking with me out there. What we bound on the earth is what? And what is bound in heaven is what? And when we come to agree, we bind things in heaven. And we're seeking God in real time because in real time, he's sitting on the right hand of the father in real time. Now, we're not talking about our God like our God is not in real time existing in a place that is not bound by time. Y'all tracking with me mm -hmm. out there. Y'all really tracking with me out there. Yep. Revelation 19 in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. Verse 12. Go ahead, sir. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. One crown. Many crowns. Come on. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Well, that says Yeshua, right? <laughs> had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Why are we arguing over names? Hey. Why, are we, why are we doing that? That's the good one there. What's the point? Uh -huh. I'm confused. <laughs> See, brother, if you don't call the name Yahuwah or Yeshua or Yehoshua or Ahiah or Yure Wave, and they all arguing with each other while I'm standing there going, okay. Which one do I call him by? But here, we know who we're talking about, right? But he got a name that don't nobody know. So how we know who we're talking about if he got a name that don't nobody know? <laughs> Y'all tracking with me out there? Yeah. Human beings, man, we, we just argue over the most ridiculous yeah, things on the planet. Stuff. Brother, you got to have your fringes on. Okay, all right, cool. All right, you want to wear them? Cool. If I ain't wearing them, don't trip on me. Brother, you can't call them by Jesus. Okay, what's well, in the Bible? By the, by, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, right? But not, not again, that's in the future, and that's when he comes back, and that's when we all know the name right here that we don't know right now, when we all got a pure language. Till then, while we arguing over that, I, look, I never see no Negro arguing over their fruits and how many homeless people they fed. That's true. You ever see that? No, never. You ever seen the video of some Negroes arguing about Man, I fed 100 homeless people. I fed 200 homeless people this week. Why, they should be arguing over that. Yeah, something that actually matters. Yeah. Not a name. That is irrelevant. Did Abraham know him by the same name Moses knew him by? Mm -hmm. Why are we arguing over names? <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> Y'all tracking with me out there. Yeah, loud and clear. Goofball action. Give me verse 12 one more again, brother. Just maybe I'm tripping because it was written in quote nine Greek, brother. And the white man changed it to a name that we did. See, the white man wrote this. So, we, yeah, OK, let's see. Verse 12. Go ahead, sir. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. All right. Says the same thing, don't it? Verse 13. Watch this, though. This is the part that should be important. Go ahead, sir. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Stop. That's the part that would needs to be important. Mm -hmm. You know, right, right. blood on his clothes. Where that blood come from? Yep. I ain't tripping on the name that I don't know. Why he got blood on his clothes, though? <laughs> mm -hmm. If somebody right now walked in this room with blood on it, if they had like a little bit of blood, we'd all be like ready to throw stuff at them and run that way, wouldn't we? Yep. I want to know where the blood came from. I ain't tripping on the name. Y'all track it with me out there. Right. Huh. Go ahead, and, and, and furthermore, for good measure, finish that off, sir. And his name is called the Word of God. All right, well, I know who that is now. He got a name written that don't nobody knew. He walking in with blood on his clothes, and his name is the Word of God. Check, yes, a boss. I'm not arguing over no names is my point. Right. Skip down to verse, skip up to verse 6. Watch this. Go ahead, sir. And I heard as they were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Wait, wait, hold up. Uh, we talking about Jesus Christ? Yeah, this is Jesus Christ. In Revelation, he says, I am God almighty. I was and am. Now, we know the father never died. So how was the father was and is an art? Right. 
Right. Y'all want to see that verse? Ask me in Q&A. Yes. Reigneth forever. God is a species, man. Mm -hmm. But that's the eighth day. I'm getting ahead of myself. Verse 7. Go ahead, sir. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. We just read about the bridegroom. The bridegroom got blood on his clothes. I don't think y'all understand that. Right. The bridegroom showed up soaked in blood. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. Y'all tracking with me? Yep. Have y'all ever seen that at a wedding? No. Where the husband show up soaked in blood? Dipped in blood. Right, like a mafia movie. <laughs> Joe Pesci show up, right? <laughs> right? Then that makes sense, but if y'all was at your cousin's wedding, he showed up soaked in blood, I guarantee you the wedding would be off. <laughs> Finito. <laughs> Mussolini, okay? <laughs> Dipped in sauce. You, you feel me? He'd be like, hey, hey, Dre, uh, look, bro. <laughs> Y'all right, man? <laughs> yeah, man, let's get this wedding popping. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like, Game yeah, time, baby. <laughs> everyone, we're going to go ahead and put a pin on this wedding real quick. <laughs> right, put him in his list. At, at the least, we're going to have to pull him out to the back room and have a conversation. Bro, why you got that blood on your shirt? Mm. Y'all don't understand. God is a black man, mm -hmm. and right. he's mad. Right. And he kills people. Mm -hmm. Justly. They don't ever tell you that. Mm -hmm. That's a great mystery. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Give me verse. Give me verse seven one more again, please. Verse seven. Go ahead. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. Come on. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Remember in Exodus. Wash your clothes. Right, right, right. Same thing. We got to keep our garments white. Verse Nina. Go ahead, sir. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Verse Tension. Go ahead, sir. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. Wait. God is Jesus? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, that just, is, that's talking about Jesus, right? So wait, worship God, he's talking about Jesus. Take a Muslim right here. See, I like, I like how Muslims do it. Well, brother, you must show me him saying it out of his own mouth. Well, I can do that too. What did Pilate say? What did Pilate say to Jesus, right? He asked him a question. He said, he said who do the Jews say I am? And he was like, he didn't say nothing. They said the, the, the son of God. And what did he say? Thou sayest. He confirmed that he was the son of God out of his own mouth. Y'all tracking with me out there. Who do they say I am? Or oh, they say you the son of God. You said it. He didn't say he was wrong. Right? He didn't deny it. He didn't deny it. He, he deny confirmed it. it out of his own mouth. Take a Muslim there and show him that. Watch what they do. Oh, that's good, brother. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Pow. Well, what does that mean? Did he confirm it? Yeah. Okay. Now let me take you to Revelation and show you this too. But the point is, it just said, worship God omnipotent, almighty. I am the almighty that was and art and shall be. Jesus Christ is the almighty also. They share the title. Ancient of days, they share the titles. Y'all tracking with me out there? Yeah, loud and clear. Finish that off, brother. All right, uh... For the testimony of Jesus is a, is a spirit of prophet. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to Isaiah 62. I finished it off. All right. I got powder all on my nose right now. <laughs> some of y'all got some disco balls going right now. Y'all yeah. sitting at the table. <laughs> nice and numb. <laughs> Just like dad used to make. <laughs> Isaiah 62. <laughs> It's funny, one of my coworkers, he used to be a drug addict, and we was working together this week, and he was telling me how, because I've never done cocaine in my life, even though I joke about it, but he was telling me how, because he used to do it, he used to, you know, be a drug addict, and he told me, he said, white boy, he's like, dude, I did, I've done it all the time, I smoked it, I snorted it, he said, I even did it, I even shot it up, and bro, let me tell you, <laughs> and I was like, well, what's the draw, like, wh like why do people do cocaine? And I didn't know, he was like, he was like, because it numbs you. And I was like, 
numbs you? What do you mean? He's like, you literally can take some cocaine, put it on your hand, and if it sinks in your skin, wherever that coke touched and, su and sunk in, will numb it. Mm. I, did, I was like, what? What was, why would somebody do that? And he's like, it makes you feel like Scarface. Like you feel invincible. Damn. You don't feel fear, right. ultimately. Okay. <clears throat> coke makes you not feel fear. Mm -hmm. That's why I liken it to these pages because these pages make me have no fear. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? That's why I say that. Isaiah 62. <laughs> you feel me? Say hello to my Allah. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel fear. Isaiah 62. I know that as long as I do what God says, I will not face fire. Isaiah 62. I ain't saying I don't get scared. I'm not saying I don't go through things, but I'm saying on average, this is it. This, this, the, that's what it is. You dig what I'm talking about? I can't feel my face when I'm with you, but I love it. <laughs> okay. Isaiah 62, <laughs> one through fever. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It got that good itch in the back of your throat. No, <laughs> Isaiah 62. One through fever. Watch this. Go ahead, kind sir. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, and to the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamb that burneth. Y'all ain't hearing that. Go ahead, sir. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name. Wait, hold up. Wait a minute. Who's, who's the Lord talking to? Then why do you say the Gentiles are going to see your righteousness if the northern kingdoms was Gentiles? Mm. Read that again. Give me verse 2 again. I'm confused. Go ahead, sir. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. So wait a minute. He's talking to Israel, and he said the Gentiles are going to see your righteousness. So how is Israel Gentiles if he's saying the Gentiles are going to see your righteousness? I don't even know. I don't understand what's going on. Furthermore, go ahead, sir. And all kings I glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name. Which, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Wait a minute. So he's talking to Israel. He says, the Gentiles are going to see your glory. Mm -hmm. So that confirms that Israel ain't Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And then he says, I'm going to give you a new name anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, go ahead, sir. <laughs> thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Come on. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. Come on. But I shall be called Hep Hespa, yes. and thy land Bula, and for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. Thy land shall be what? Married. married. The marriage supper of the lamb. The bridegroom goes forth to get the bride out of her closet. You will no longer be termed desolate. You will no longer be forsaken. Your land will be married. You will be called Hepzibah. And Hepzibah basically is a fanciful name for Palestine. And Beulah basically means mastered. It means to be married, mm. not forsaken anymore. And if y'all want to know what it is, we got uh, Strong's 11. And again, I'm not, really, I'm not really the proponent of Strong's because when I look at the picture of Strong's, it confuses me how these Israelites that want to say that the white man is terrible put so much faith and strength into the white man, which is Strong. Y'all ever seen the picture of Strong? Strong looked like he just finished playing some dominoes and whipping some Negroes, whipping his slaves in the back. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He got that old stiff white man look, too. But yet and still, they want to put so much into the concordance and so less in the Bible. That's just always weird to me. Anyway, verse fever. Go ahead, kind mm -hmm. sir. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as thy bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall so thy God rejoice over thee. Are we clear that Jesus is the bridegroom? Yeah. We clear that Israel is the bride? Mm -hmm. The line from the tribe of Judah? Yeah. Gathering his people? Yes. Mm -hmm. His church, his bride? Yes. In the seventh month? Yes. After the seventh trumpet? Mm -hmm. We clear? <laughs> Y'all tracking? All right, let's see the bride come out of her closet. And let's confirm who the bride is. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Hosea 3. I wonder why the bride was in the closet. Maybe she's trying to get away from R. Kelly and P. Diddy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm terrible. 
I'm such a stinker, like they said in the cartoons. I'm such a stinker. <laughs> For real, though. That bro got problems. That Rico ain't a gang. Rico is not a gang. Rico is not a gang. Racketeering, and when they start squeezing the people around them, and I ain't talking about that Rico right there, neither. I ain't talking about you, man. Even though you're not a game either when it comes to these scripts, bro. But you know what I'm talking about. That charge. Hosea 3. Let's see who the bride is. Hosea 3, 1 through fever. And why was she in the closet? Go ahead, sir. Then said the Lord God, excuse me, then said the Lord unto me, go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord, towards the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. Matter of fact, let me hit you with this. Back up, go to Hosea 1 and give me verse 2. Hosea 1, verse 2. Watch this with a silent W. Watch this. Hosea 1, verse 2. Go ahead, sir. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea. Who said this to Hosea now? The Lord. Okay, go ahead. Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom departing from the Lord. Now I want us to stop for a second. And I want us to ponder what the Lord just told one of his holy prophets. Can anyone tell me what he just told one of his holy prophets to go do? Marry a hoe. <laughs> and have children with a whore, and you'll have a wife that is a certified bona fide. Like we ain't talking about, you know, she got she got a body count, don't nobody know about, and I'm so pristine. No, she out on the blade. Okay. She wearing down that, 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 that toenail polish, walking up and down the blade. Y'all understand what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Certified. Mm. So yeah. that's ill that the man of God, everybody knows the man of God, and all of a sudden the man of God pops up with, he pops up with this. Verse 3, go ahead, sir. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Deb Debilim. Stop. Now, hey, man, you, you heard about Hosea, man? <laughs> He got Gomer. Now, if I'm going to go by her, what her name sound like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> sound like Gomer was a goer. <laughs> sound like Gomer. She wasn't looking like, like if Leah was tender eyed. I don't know Gomer. But he went and got a certified bona fide whore. Can you imagine what they were saying about him? Cause, yeah, man. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the type of suffering as a as a man? Keep it a buck. Roberto Duran loped up on Sugar Ray Leonard's wife in a press conference and got inside his head and made him lose his title because he he talked crazy about his wife and the allegations weren't true, right? right. Gomer was a certified whore, so can you imagine? What they were saying about, Man. can you imagine that? Day by day, you got to look at Gomer because mm. the Lord told you to go marry a whore. That is horrible. <laughs> ha! Ha! Okay, we'll share the credit for that joke right there. <laughs> no pun intended. No Camera walking to a spotlight. Bro. Hey, hey. Bro. Like, you know hey. they was giving him a side eye. <laughs> you know they looking at him crazy. My point is, we ain't never had to do nothing like that. We ain't never had to walk around naked for three years because God told us to. We have not resisted under to. We have not resisted to blood. I couldn't even do this. I'd have been like, Lord, can we figure something else out? Yeah. Right? Man, you know, Fonz, Fonz wife, man, you, hey, you know. She, she used to be on a blade, homie. Hey, what's up, Font? <laughs> and I got Gomer on my arm. What's up, bro? I just wanted to illustrate that. Take 
this is what the Lord, the extremes the Lord went to to get his point across mm. about how heartbroken he was Ouch. because of his wife. Y'all tracking with me out there. Yeah. And if the Lord don't change, you think he feel the same way? Yeah. That part. Mm. He's a jealous God. He said his name is Jealous. That's one of his names. Let's argue over the name Jealous. Mm. Y'all tracking with me out there. Loud and clear. Give me verse 3. Finish verse 3. Go ahead, sir. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Debalam, which conceived and bare him a son. Now going to Hosea 3. Mm. Now going to Hosea 3. I just wanted y'all to understand what we dealing with. He told one of his holy prophets to go get a certified streetwalker yeah. as a wife. And wife her and keep her. Dang. Woo! That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. That's what he's going to do. He's going to rewife us. That's why we was in the closet, though. Mm -hmm. But she can't keep, she can't be on the blade, though. Mm -hmm. Can't be out there with other guys, though. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie. Hosea Trey, give me one through fever. Go ahead, sir. And they said the Lord unto me, go yet. Love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. Wait, we like to get drunk and turn up all the time. Yep. That'd be half of our problems wanting you to turn up. Right. How about we turn down? Right. Little John said, turn down for what? Be turn down for what? Because <laughs> it's not good to turn up all the time. Verse two, go ahead, sir. So I bought her. So you did what now? So I bought her. Come on. To me for 15 pieces of silver and for an homer of barley and half homer of barley. So he gets 15 pieces of silver and, and two homers to go get Gomer. Mm -hmm. Y'all tracking with me out there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. And I said unto her, thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot and thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee? Man, I, I can't even imagine that conversation. Yeah. I cannot imagine that. I mean, I can imagine it, but I, I, I can't fathom it. Yeah. You got to tell your woman, look, you're going to be my wife, but you can't be out on the track no more. You can't be dealing with other men. Don't no man want to have that conversation with a certified bona fide. Yeah. Whew. Because she already been done, done it. Boy, it. <laughs> it's already been done. Bro, the Lord is if, if y'all don't, if we don't understand that the Lord ain't playing and he's harsh, yeah. look what he did to his own son. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay? Look what he did to his own son. When I talk about the Lord, I'm talking about the father. Look what he did to his only beloved son. Yeah. Hamburger Ouch. meat. Yeah. So Hosea got off easy. Mm. Even though this is crazy, Hosea got off easy. Our afflictions that we have in our life, we're getting off easy. That's true. We're getting off easy. Y'all tracking? Yeah. Verse 3. I'm sorry, verse 4. Go ahead, sir. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without Ephraim, excuse me, and without Tephraim. That's why we're in the closet. Go ahead, sir. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. And shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Wait, David's going to be their king? Like, David? King David, David? The dude that's sinned with Bathsheba? Because there is forgiveness, ain't it? Mm -hmm. And that's the point of mentioning David. Forgiveness. Let's go on to Isaiah 11. That's who the bride is. The children of Israel who like to get drunk and turn up. And turn down for what? Yeah, that may be cool when you 18, 20, 21, 25, but around 30, 35, you'll turn down. You want to turn down for what? Because I'm tired? Because mm -hmm. I got to go to work in the morning? Because <laughs> my kidneys is hurting? Mm. My knees, uh, yeah, I know about that. Because my knees hurt? <laughs> turn down for what? Because I want salvation. Isaiah 11. Here is the bride, Isaiah 11. And this is only the first day of tabernacles. This is only the meaning for the first day of tabernacles. Isaiah 11, 10 through 16. Go ahead, sir. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Come on. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand 
again the second time. The third time. The second time. Come on. To recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria. From Egypt? And from Egypt. Come on. And from Pathros. That said Czechoslovakia. No, from Pathros. The German? No. Germany? Pathros. Huh. Come on. And from Cush. Come on. And from Elam. And from Shinar. And from Hamath. From Poland. And from Hamath. From Russia? Hamath. Come on. And from the islands of the sea. Oh, there we go. That said the Ukraine. Mm -mm. Yeah. Islands of the sea. Right. Black people. First. Yeah. That's what the northern kingdom is. Because mm. they went out by the hands of the Assyrians. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Go ahead, sir. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Wait, he's setting up a sign for the nations to come to? Ah, so now we get to the stranger. He sets up a sign for the nations to come to. Go ahead, sir. And gather, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Notice he talked about Assyria, that's the northern kingdom. Then he made specifically to talk about Judah, scattered into the four corners. Verse 13, go ahead, sir. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart. That's the northern kingdom. Go ahead. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Come on. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. One united kingdom. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. Come on. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. With our God, we're going to wax. We're going to turn the fight. What did it say? How many going to come up against us? And they're going to flee seven ways? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, sir. Fifteen. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over dry shot. Just like he brought us into the land before, we're going to go across dry shot. Just like we came out of Egypt across that, we went into the land across the river Jordan, and we're going to go back into the land across a body of water. Same thing tw three times. Same thing thrice. Go ahead, sir. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel, in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Again, the bride coming out, Jeremiah 3. All the women that get married, they so, they so nervous and frustrated and everything leading up to the wedding, but then in the wedding, they're a ball of emotions and happiness. And then after the wedding, they mad at their husband. <laughs> right back to being mad at your husband, right? But the point is, the wedding is a glorious thing. It's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Filled with all these emotions associated with it. This is the bride coming out of the closet to her husband. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 3, 1 through 14. We're going to dance and I got you, bro. Go ahead. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return to her again? You know, that's against the law. Go ahead. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. That's the grace and mercy. Yeah. He's literally, that we, we are Gomer. Yeah. We're Gomer. Mm. Y'all know that Rahab the harlot is named Rahab the harlot in the Bible, but talks about Rahab the harlot getting salvation. Because right. mm -hmm. yeah. she wasn't a harlot no more. Mm -hmm. Right. Y'all tra tracking with me out there. Even though we was Gomer, we ain't got to be Gomer no more. Yeah. Verse 2, go ahead, sir. Lift up thine eyes into the high places, and see where thou hast not been lain with. In thy ways hast thou sat for them. Come on. As the Arabian in the wilderness, thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Come on. Therefore the showers have been withholding, and there hath been no latter rain. You don't feed whores. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. and, thou hast, and thou hast a whore's forehead. Thou, thou refusest to be ashamed. A whore's forehead. I don't care what you say, I'm going to be out in these streets. <laughs> That's a whore's forehead. Verse 4, watch this. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, my father? Thou art the God of my youth. If you got a whore's forehead, you won't. You in them streets. Yep. In too deep. You in them streets in too, too deep, deep with them gangsters. Yep. Go ahead, sir. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? He will not. Go ahead, sir. Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldest. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, 
Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? Come on. She is gone up every, excuse me, she has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. That's why we were in the closet. Yeah. My question is, are we still being spiritual whores? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are we still doing things as a whole? Yes, but I'm saying in our individual lives, are we still vexing God? Yeah. We are still vexing God in some of the things that we do. We have to not do that. Go ahead, kind sir. And I said after, and I said after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Come on. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I have put her away and given her, given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went out. And played the harlot also. He's like, at least I'm going to give Judah, the southern kingdom, a chance. Mm -hmm. and, the, and I'm going to tell you all this, too, and I can back this up in the Bible. The only reason we were allowed to go back to the land was to, so, the, so the most holy could get anointed. That's the only reason why we was allowed back in the land to build up the land to even have a temple so Christ could come and we could say Hosanna and crown him king. That's the only reason why. Y'all tracking with me. Yep. You know how I know? Because where are we right now? Right back out the house. Because we were whores. Yep. The hoes the, hit the dough hoe. Yep. Hole yep. up. Y'all yep. understand what I'm talking about? Loud and clear, yeah. It was not by our righteousness while we were allowed back. It's because prophecy said that there had to be a light in Jerusalem to anoint the most holy. That should make us all feel like garbage. Yep. Okay? Let's not get up on our high horse is my point. True. Go ahead, kind sir. Verse Nina, go ahead. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. Come on. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignly saith the Lord. Are we feignly serving God right mm. now? Are we serving God with our whole heart or we still got some little stuff just kind of tucked away that we got popping that we just, because the Lord sees. Playing games. We can't be fain with it. We got to be 100 with it. True. And if we fall down, we get up. Y'all yeah. tracking with me out Loud there. Loud and clear. Verse 11. Go ahead, sir. And the Lord said unto me, the backsliding Israel have justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Come on. Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and will not keep anger forever. What we got to do, though? Verse 13. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. Stop. That's it. Yep. That's all we got to do. Now I had a horse forehead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. That thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Sound like the Lord don't like green trees. What's up with Christmas? Verse 14. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you, one of a city, and two of a family, and will bring you to Zion. Remember Hosea? Gather the people, assemble the outcasts. That's what we're talking about, the Feast of Ingathering. <laughs> The marriage of the Lamb. And that's just day one. That ain't day eight. <coughs> Skip to verse 17. Go ahead, sir. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it. Wait, I thought the nations had nothing coming. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it. Watch this. Go ahead, sir. To the name of the Lord. Come on. To Jerusalem. Come on. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. Because God is there and they'll see God. And everybody's going to know what God looks like. And they're going to all know because they're going to be taught by us how to serve God. Ain't going to be no guesswork. Go ahead, sir. 18. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for inheritance unto your fathers. Come on. But I said, how shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the host of nations? And I said... Thou shalt call me my father, 
and shall not turn away from me. Wait, this is Christ talking, right? Yep. Wait, Christ is our father? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Isaiah 9, verse 6 substantiates that in case you want to check that out, Isaiah 9, verse 6. But anyway, verse 20, go ahead, sir. Surely, as a wife treacherously departed from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith that's, the Lord. That's the meaning of the first day. Mm -hmm. We're gathering his people. The bride comes out, gathers the bride. The bridegroom comes and regathers the bride. And then we're going to meet God, the Father, face to face and dwell in his tabernacle. And this is the eighth day meaning of tabernacle. Real brief. 21, Revelation 21, 21. 21, 21. Give me Revelation 21. Let's go one through four. And we're going we're gonna to do a foxtrot. We're going to do a, a, a little foxtrot dance. Not a waltz, but a foxtrot. Revelation 21. Let's go one through four. Revelation 21, one through four, just, and we're going to dance. Go ahead, kind sir. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Come on. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. The bridegroom and the bride in their house, in the tabernacle. Go ahead, sir. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Come on. And there shall be no more death. Stop. That's all I know. Flesh is over. There's no more death. Go ahead, sir. Now the sorrow. There's no more flesh left. It's flesh, we sorrow. Go ahead, sir. No crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. Flesh is over. It's clear. Go ahead, sir. For the former things are passed away. Skip down to verse 7. Go ahead, sir. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Give me verse 7 one more again. Go ahead. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. How come Sunday never told me this? Yeah, that's true. They never told me I was going to be God. They never told me I was going to have all things. There's only one being, or should I say one family of beings that I know that has all things. And that's God. He, but if you overcome and I overcome, we'll inherit all things. We'll inherit all things except death, sorrow, crying, and pain. Y'all tracking? We'll inherit everything except those things because the former stuff has passed away. Verse 10, verse 10. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. Verse 10. Go ahead. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and show me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Come on. Having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Come on. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates. How many gates? Twelve gates. Come on. And at the gate twelve angels. How many angels? Twelve angels. Come on. And names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. I had a Jehovah's Witness with that. When they tried to tell me that Israel wasn't important, mm -hmm. I went right there and I read that to them. I had them read it, and I said, 12 gates, huh? And I said, on those 12 gates is the name of the children of Israel. And I was like, when you walk through those gates, you got to pass under a name of the children of Israel, mm -hmm. of a tribe. You can't tell me that the children of Israel aren't important. Mm -hmm. And they was like, and, and then they said that to me. They said, but see, brother, that's the spiritual Israel. And I asked him this question. I said, what's the difference between spiritual Dan and spiritual Issachar? And they was like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and they were like, it was great talking to you. And then they literally packed up and they had a display with the chairs out there and everything. What is the difference between spiritual Issachar and spiritual Judah? You tell me, show me in the Bible. Right, because that's a fallacy. Ain't no, woo, no, that's for real the children of Israel. Don't give me no Scooby-Doo. Y'all tracking with me out there. Skip down to verse 18. Verse 18, go ahead, sir. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. I don't know what that looked like, but that sound dope. Verse 20. And the foundation, excuse me, the fifth. Uh, 21. 21, 21, skip to 21, go ahead. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, 
and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. I need to see that. Verse 25, skip to 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. Come on. And it shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Wait, they're talking about nations? But this is after everyone's been judged and death is no more, and they're still talking about nations. Right. I thought the nations were going to get annihilated, wiped away, and destroyed. Apparently, some nations have made it into Elohim also. They just don't live in the city of God. And I ain't talking about Brazil. Y'all tracking with me out there. Y'all tracking with me out there. Verse 27. Go ahead, sir. And there shall no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither who whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. Stop. Hey, who's told a lie in the last year in here? Yeah. No, who told who a lie? told a lie. Yeah. I told a little baby white lie. I told a little baby lamb lie. Little, the little cute baby. It was a cute baby cat lie. See, baby cat cute lie. Right. I don't care if it looked like a cute cat meme. I don't want to hear that. I repented from it, but the point is, read 27 one more again. Before we get on our high horse, go ahead, sir. And there shall no wise enter into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie. Stop. Okay. Go ahead, sir. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. This is it. The tabernacle of God. God is a species. God is a family. And whoever's left over at this is in God's tabernacle, fashioned to be God by God. Fubu, right? Fubu, for us, by us, fashioned to be God by God. And that's just one of God's promises, just one. Let's go to Hebrews 6, last place. And that's the eighth day meaning. That's the eighth day of tabernacles meaning. All in a couple of verses. Understanding the Lord's holy convocation slash feast part two, we all should be able to explain at least some of these days that we do out of the Bible. And then if we have, if we'd be so fortunate to be able to explain to people these days, ask them to explain Christmas out of the Bible to you. If they can. <laughs> See, brother, we, but they'll tell you, well, we actually know that Christmas is pagan, but, you know, we still do it. It's for the kid. Yeah, that, that's the excuse for the kids. That ain't never worked though. Like that, like that excuse is for the kids. And I've never heard nobody at a murder trial. The, the 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 lawyer stands up and says, "Your Honor, my client mowed down 15 people, but it was for the kids." <laughs> right? Right. That don't work in real life. Is my point. Exactly. It don't work. That's an excuse. Yep. Playing Hebrews. Yourself. Hebrews six. It's for the kids. Your Honor, Bishop Magic Don Juan pimped a whole lot of women, but it was for the kids. Yeah. Right. It was to show the kids a good time. Okay. Guilty. <laughs> right. Pay your fine. Hebrews 6. I wish I could use it was for the kids. I wish I could walk in the bank. My account is overdrawn, but I would like for you to put $100,000 up in my bank account. It's for the kids. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try that this week. <laughs> See what they say. Security. <laughs> Go get this tall Negro with this sweater, please. <laughs> Hebrews six. The only way we make it to the Father's tabernacle is to be fashioned by God, faith and mercy and truth. Hebrews six eleven through twelve. Go ahead, sir. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Come on. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. In conclusion, read the Bible more than just during the Sabbath. Read it throughout the week, right? Pray for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and don't tell no lies at least six days out of this coming week, okay? <laughs> and I hope y'all got some understanding in the name of Jesus. <laughs>